viewers welcome to our channel textbook reading so today we will continue our textbook reading of biology part 5 chapter 1 so here is our biology textbook let's open it to that page so guys this is page number 9 that is part 5 so let's start reading Free from here. Vacuole. Activity 5. Observing vacuoles. Take the leaf or stem of any succulent plant like the torch cactus. Take thin cross section of stem of cactus in a watch glass containing water. Stain it with dilute saffronine solution. Observe the section under low and high power microscope. What do you observe? The large empty spaces present in the cell are vacuoles. These are fluid filled sac like structures. In animal cells, vacuoles are small in size while in plant cells they are large. In mature plant cells, they might occupy almost the entire cell space. Vacuoles maintain turgor pressure within the cell. They export unwanted substances from the cell. Are the cells flat? Usually, when cells are seen under the microscope, the image appears as flat as two-dimensional. It seems that all the organelles in the cell are situated in one plane. In reality, cells have length, breadth and thickness. We can easily see the length and breadth, but we cannot see the thickness of the cell under the microscope. We tend to think that these are flat objects. However, there are few easy ways to observe the thickness of the cell. The easiest method is to slightly change the focus while viewing plant cell on the slide and look at the cell wall. You will find that you are able to see the thickness of the wall. This three dimensional image becomes clear if you reduce the intensity of light as well. Each cell thus acquires its structure and ability to function because of the organization of its membrane and organelles in a specific way. Where do cells come from? The observations so far made it clear that our living beings are made up of cells and that each cell has nucleus. Around 1838 to 1839, two scientists expressed this in the form of a theory. The scientists were Matthias Jacob Sliding, 1804 to 1881, and Theodore Schwann, 1810 to 1882. Schleiden was a botanist, while Schwann was a zoologist. For a record, it should be mentioned that quite a few scientists had recognized by that time that the cells were present in all living organisms and were expressing it their its own ways. However. Sliden and Swan were the first to claim that this fact was true for the entire plant and animal kingdom. In other words, they took the first blurred step of generalizing from observations and coming up with a theory that was applicable to all living organisms. And because of this, the credit of for profounding the cell theory goes to them. What is noteworthy is that there was a gap of about 200 years between Robert Hooke's first observing cell and formulation of cell theory. Schleiden and Swann together formulated the cell theory. This theory, however, did not explain as the how new cells were formed. Rudolf Karl Virchow, 1885, first explained that the cells could be formed only for by the division of pre-existing cells. The modified hypothesis of Schleiden and Schwann to give the cell theory a final shape. Cell theory as understood today is based on two cardinal principles. 1. All living organisms are composed of cells and products of cells. 2. All the cells arise from pre-existing cells. So this is the end of the chapter and we have read full chapter that is from page number 1 to page number 10 so this is the end so people this is our channel textbook reading 
and if you didn't see the previous videos please make sure that you see the previous parts of this lesson don't forget to like share and subscribe and hit the bell icon for more notifications thank you and bye bye